Thanks for joining me today as we renovate and reorganize my craft loft area. This is the before picture and I will say I'm a little embarrassed, but I knew for about a week that we were going to be doing this, so I didn't do a lot of cleanup after my different crafting projects. So it's a bit of a mess, but you can see I have a lot of plastic bins and all these different storage mechanisms that I've gathered over time that were helpful at the moment, but now it's just a big hodgepodge. I took everything off off of my craft area and I put it on the other side of the room in this temporary holding area. This is my husband doing all the shelving work for me. He's super supportive of me. This is progress as we have a couple shelves that went up. Even more progress as most of the shelves were up. This is the completed job with all the shelves ready for me to reorganize. So the reorganization took a lot of work, a lot of post-it notes, but here we are. Stay until the end and I have an amazing tip that I think will help all of you in your craft areas. Hi friends, today we're going to take a look at my new office. I've shown you the before pictures, now let's see the after pictures. Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick overview and then I'll do a close up with me behind the scenes so that you can see exactly what I did with each one. First of all, as you can see, my husband built me these beautiful shelves and they support on top of my desk. We'll start over in this corner over here where I have card fronts and my design paper here. I've got still a bunch of things that I'm not quite sure what I want to do with this. This is my area that's still not exactly where I want it. I've got some old things that I'm not sure what to do with like this and this. I might get rid of them, but I have a feeling I need to give myself an opportunity to have places just to throw things. I'll show this in a minute, but I keep all my stamps in these little containers down here. I'll show you those. I did really well at Hobby Lobby with some of these little bins. They open up, so those are really nice. And I've got everything that I would use on a continual basis right here behind me. If we come over here, you can see that I've got my inks and things there. And then I have a kind of like a toilet paper or paper towel dispenser that's on its way. And I'm going to move my tapes from this dowel thing to standing out right here with a paper towel holder. So if I get that before I do this video, I'll show you that as well. I've got an outlet hidden back there. I put all of my ribbon, twine, and things like that back here on these little dowels. This is my project plate. So I've got a project that you'll be seeing soon about an obsession of mine. Here I've got all of my embossing powders, my pops of color in here. I've got a washi tape bin, flowers, fabric flowers, the little ones, the buttons. Over here I have die cut stickers and wood pieces metal dies, embossing folders, my gem embellishments. I've got some sentiment strips and I've got adhesive sheets, my completed cards, I have a bin for that. So down here in these bins at the bottom, I've got an envelopes, card bases, I've got my heat gun, I've got a hot plate in here, die cutting and embossing machine down here. And then as you can see, if you follow me over this way, these are some of the fallout. <laughs> I'm sure I can use that downstairs for my dog supplies and things like that. Put it in the basement where nobody needs to see all this plastic stuff. My husband is so happy that there's no more plastic bins every time he comes up here. It looks a lot neater, a lot cleaner. One other item I wanted to show you is this. My husband built me this. It's because I love to stand when I'm crafting and I'm using my standing desk at my actual desk. He built this for me. I didn't want one of those metal black ones. You know, like I have all my little magnets from my stand positioners tend to attach to those metal areas. So he built me this wood one. That just goes right here and it sits on top of my desk. So it sits up here and so then I'm able to craft at a level that I'm a little bit happier with. And then over here you can see is my actual desk where I do my content creation, my bill paying, whatever else needs to happen. And this is a standing desk as well. So that lifts up and I'm able to stand at this desk. And then when I'm not needing to be working, I can work on my craft. So I'm an everyday crafter. I am not someone that sells my cards. I'm not someone that sells stamping supplies. I just love to craft. It's one of my favorite hobbies, aside from my little dogs over here. 
who I have lots of videos out about my dogs. Only two of them up here today. I have five of them, as most of you know. I'll go into a little bit more detail, so we'll get to that now. So as you could tell before, I've left the top of my desk for things like photos, just uh, all my favorite kind of things to look at, which is mostly my family, grandkids. So I labeled each of these beautiful boxes. I got these from Hobby Lobby on their 40% off sale. They were only $12.99, so 40% off is a pretty good price. The smaller ones were $9.99. I thought those were really good prices. Granted, they are cardboard. They are super nice. So this has got acetate, vellum, and card fronts in it. Nothing exciting in here. Just sometimes I like to have white, black, and off-white card fronts. I've got some of my vellum and things like that, and some acetate in here as well. Plenty of room for me to add more. As I said, I'm an everyday crafter. I'm not a crafter that does this for my livelihood. I am not a demonstrator. So this is just an everyday person who has a hobby that takes up a lot of space. My design paper is in here. So I have not really organized this very well. I usually get the six by six, so you can see it's all in here. I kind of have Christmas at the back. And then I have these bigger from Stamperia that are in the back that I will probably need to get around to organizing a little bit better, but it works for me to be able to flip through and see what I want to use if I have a color in mind. Again, this is kind of my area where I have yet to decide what I want to do. I love this stupid wood little thing that I got super cheap somewhere a million years ago. And I just like it because it's got some drawers. So I keep my acrylic box in there, my extra tapes. These are some old kind of cruddy stamp pads. I've got my texture pastes back there. I've got some glue sticks that I don't really use all that much. And then a bunch of some glitter and things like that. So I'm just gonna keep that kind of out of the way in this corner. I've got my glasses and my white scraps. This was, I used to have a whole bunch of Hallmark cards in here. For right now, I have my scraps in there. I don't know that's where I'm gonna keep them all, but for right now, it's out of the way. As I mentioned before, I keep my stamps in these little buckets. If you follow any Stampin' Up! or any kind of demonstrators that do this for a living, they usually keep them organized in a different way, but I love this organization method. What I do is I kind of cut them all up when I get them and I put them in categories. So I'll show you real quick how I do that. So as you can see, I have everything in here and it's labeled with my little handy dandy label maker. As an example, if I have sayings for love and Valentine's Day, when you open this up, all you're going to find in here is things about love. I can quickly find what I'm looking for in here. These are mostly sentiments. This is all sentiments, my sentiments and my saying side. I've got sayings for birthdays, saying for thanks. They're all different stamp brands. And again, not ideal if I were going to be selling stamps or things like that. For me, since I'm just an everyday crafter, you can see that these are just different sentiments. And I'll show you how I keep track of what's in each one of these bins. I have three bins, only two are full, these, and then I have one extra just to grow with. So those are my sentiment tubs. So we'll get over here and see what I have in these two. I just have some foil sheets in here. I don't do any hot foiling. These are just the rub-on foils that are in here. I have very small Altenew and Distress inks, and I keep them in containers that are labeled. So that's all that's in there. Down here I have my most used items. So in this little acrylic piece I have my big spray bottle, my favorite glue. I've got some of my little pick tools that are in here, some other glues, my stays on cleaner. These are just some things I use, like a little tea, my little bone folder. This is to get my die cuts out of my dies. And these are a couple more glues that I use for just projects that I don't need any precision with. Over here I have some of my tapes. I have removable tape, I've got double-sided tape, I've got post-it tape, and then just regular old tape. I've got some markers I don't use all that often back there. These are my newest markers that I'm having so much fun with. Tri-blend markers, so it just allows me to blend a little bit more. So it's three different shades of the same color. I'll be putting out a video where we can take a look at those, but I have those all back there. I've got some of my water paints back there. In this little bin, it's actually three bins next to each other. My runner tapes, some of my colored pencils, daubers, and some of my blenders. And then I have colored pens because I tend to use those when I'm writing a letter to someone. 
these are all my distress oxide inks that I have in this container. I have some blending tops next to those. My favorite stamps, and again, I'm not affiliated with anyone, but they are just the best, are the Stampin' Up! stamp pads. And I always include my Stampin' Up! demonstrator's information in the description below, just in case some of you don't have a demonstrator. She's super knowledgeable, so if you had any questions about what papers coordinate and things like that, but their papers coordinate perfectly with their ink pads. I am a huge fan. For Christmas, I got all of these Stampin' Up! stamp pads, and I am in love with how well they make an image. All right, and those of you that didn't see my thank you video, my husband, he bought me this. It says, welcome to Gentastic Journey's office. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I really appreciate that. That's from one of my besties when I left my job. Over here, I've got more of these bins. I think I bought them out of the bins. They were on their 40% off sales. I went in one day and there was a bunch of them. I went in the next day for something else and they were almost all gone. So I got to it and I got whatever I could. I don't use a ton of these flowers and embellishments, but when I do, they're in here. This little bin has them organized. I've got more bins down there. So it's more organized than it looks and I know where everything is but that's got my brads, my beads, embellishment buttons, things like that. This has got my washi tape in it. Washi tape for me is something that I use, not as much as maybe some other people, but I do get into a washi mood. So I've got a couple of bins in here. This one is a bigger one and it's got all sorts of different sizes and different brands. And then I've got this one, plain matte colors. So down here are all my Lindy embossing powders. I also have some from Wow. I have some up there from Stampin' Up. Lindy's, I just really like all their color options. They've got some beautiful colors. Then they're my, those are my pops of color. And then I have some Distress Oxide reinkers in the back. I use those probably more than any of my other reinkers. So I have my other reinkers a little bit further down. These are just little dowels that I use for my ribbon, my yarn, strings. I think those are super easy. They're not all that pretty and it looks maybe a little messier than some people would appreciate. I like to kind of have everything at my fingertips so that's what I like about those. That's a temporary space for all of my foam tape. And then this is just a tray where I keep my current projects. Let's go through this shelf here. This is my die cut stickers and wood cuts. So I've got, so I've just got some stickers in here, some of my wood pieces, wood cuts, and then I've got just different stickers, some die cuts. And I just keep them in these little baggies. Plenty of room in that box as well. These are my metal dies. And in here you'll find some of my 3M magnet tape. These are sentiment dies that I've already cut out. This is what I do with my dies. I put them in these bags and then because sometimes it's hard to tell what they say, I indicate what's on there. And so that's what I do with a lot of these. These are all my sentiments. After my sentiments and my letters, I have shapes. So those are my butterflies and flowers and all sorts of things. And then towards the back, I have my background dies. And you can see, this is a good example. So I put a little bit of that magnetic tape on the back. And so it just keeps them from flopping around. I don't need them with every one. Sometimes I have these full sheets of magnet that I put in the back for like some of these dies that have lots of little intricate ones. So you see these all have the magnet sheet in the back. Plenty of space in here as you can see to grow and then the last bucket on this shelf is my embossing folders again lots of space um, i have all my smaller ones here i have the regular embossing folders here and then i've got all my 3d ones in the back here love embossing folders i absolutely love them and i use them probably in every project i've got those foam boards that I might just put them in some of these just to keep them kind of held up. But it's nice to be able to move these around as needed. If I move over here, I'm just gonna pull some of these out. These are my completed cards. I just have some categories from a different box I used to use. These are all my just completed cards that are ready for when I need them. I don't sell cards. 
I give them to my family and friends and I like to make videos about them. So you'll see all my videos on my YouTube channel. That's how I really got into it was watching other people and some of their ideas. These are some sentiment strips, adhesive strips and adhesive sheets. So I print my own sentiment strips. If you guys have seen these, you can buy these to just print them on my own printer and put them in different fonts. I have lots of different fonts that I have in here. If it's a more serious card, I can have a serious print. Or I can have a fun print. So I just print these occasionally and use these. Then I've got my Gina K and my Sizzix adhesive sheets in here, some other adhesive sheets. So that's all that's in here. And then I have lots of a gem embellishments and I'm super cheap when it comes to gem embellishments. So I'll buy them at the Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, wherever I find them super cheap because to me, gem embellishments are gem embellishments. Um, I also got some shipping labels from the Dollar Store. If we go down to the bottom of this side, this is a loft. So that's my downstairs. So you can kind of see up into this room. So I wanted it to be as clean as possible when to see from the bottom. So that's why on the other side, you saw I had all that stuff. But if you look from the downstairs, all you see is these bins and those pretty flowered ones. So that's kind of nice and clean. And that's how I wanted it. You can see I labeled this one envelopes. For my envelopes, I literally put the size of the envelope on a label. So these are all my different envelopes. And so sometimes I'll just pull this out and keep it on my desk. My desk is really long because I have this credenza. I can station some of my card fronts and my envelopes on here and then I craft over there. That really works well for me so I can pull out these little bins and then I have my card bases. So then I'll, I do the same thing here and I get oriented the other direction but you get the same idea. I put the size of the card fronts five by seven. I use mostly four and a quarter by five and a half and then I have just a little cheat sheet back here that tells me which card base what it's called so that when I'm making a video I can say it's an A2 card or whatever it is and what the coordinating envelope side needs to be. Then at the bottom, this comes out whenever I'm doing a craft. This is my embossing and die cutting machine. And then those are all the plates behind it. So that's just kind of kept out of the way. This is my hot gun and this is a hot plate. It's actually a pancake maker. I'm going to be putting a video out really quickly about this because it's a cute idea. I've had this forever and I saw a video where somebody used this for something else, but it got me thinking and uh, now I use this for my card crafting. Also, I use this metal pan. I put my cards in there, my card fronts in there when I'm embossing and it prevents them from getting warped. First of all, it sits flat. I don't burn my fingers and the metal just keeps it from warping. It's not all that pretty, but it's down here and nobody can see it anyway. This credenza I use for actually like taxes and papers and all my dog vet things. <laughs> and this used to be a work office for me. I've had to clear quite a bit of stuff out of here. And the rest of this desk, I also use still for office purposes, except for this one side is super handy. It's a drawer, but the drawer opens, these little pins come out and then it just pops open. So it's flat. So if you wanted to put like a keyboard on there, which is what I used to do, it's nice and flat. When it's shut, as I'm standing at my standing desk, I can just reach in and pull stuff out because I know where everything is in here. Let me show you kind of the things that I have in here. So I just have a foam piece in here in case I want to do a lot of stamping and my desk is a little hard. This is my stamp positioner. This is just an acrylic mat from when I'm using paints and things like that. This is my guillotine paper cutter. This is my newest fun tool that I also got at Hobby Lobby. It's a Fiskars cutter and it's got the arm that goes out for additional measurements. And I have been dying for one of these. I have this super cheap one that I've had for a gazillion years and it's just, it's just cheap. It does good if I just need to cut something super small and really quick, but I'm glad that I upgraded. <laughs> it was on sale at Hobby Lobby for 40% off. So I'm really happy with this. It's much sturdier. I have cut up this sticky mat and I put it in my precision press so I don't have to use the magnets. I just really don't like the magnets. So this sticky piece got a cover, but I stick my card on there and it stayed really sticky for a long time. Plus it's pink and pretty. So I just have the rest of it there. I've also got a bigger cutting mat down here that I'll move up if I need that. On this side, one of my besties gave me this glass plate to use it more for like writing on. I use that to put some of my paints or some of my, if I'm gonna use like water with my stamps, I'll just use this as that plate. 
Here's another cutting plate. This is usually the one you see in my videos. This is the one I use the most often. So this is nice because not only does it make the creases, but it also make, helps me make envelopes. And then I've just got some scrap paper and things like that. My little press, which is not very pretty, but very, very functional. While we're in this drawer, I did want to show you, I said I would show you this. This is how I organize my stamps. And now you're not going to be like overly impressed. It works really well for me. So this is just a piece of copy paper. And what I do is every time I get a new stamp set, I put it in the copier. I have a copy of what those stamps look like. I also do the same thing with, these are all my embossing folders. So I had just have a Brad keeping them all together and I just use scrap paper and I can see what all my embossing folders look like. There's white on the backs of all of these. So that's nice because then I can see what it looks like on white and see what it looks like on color. These are all my dies and this is held together by a Brad. I just take a photocopy of these, believe it or not. And that just lets me see what all my dies look like. So that's super helpful for me. I sometimes just breeze through here and see. So you remember I had each of the containers for my stamps. These are what's in each bin. So this says sayings thin long. So if I go over to my sayings thin long container with my stamps in it, this is what I'll see in there. Same thing with sayings birthday. So now there's page one of page two. Um, I used to stamp them in here. So that's these that are all stamped nicely. Then I got lazy and now I just photocopy. So the photocopies don't come out quite as nice, but at least it lets me know what's where. And you can see I have a few new ones that I got around Christmas time that are not yet attached in here. But the nice thing is I just tape it in. So I'm just an everyday stamper. So that it works really well for me. It helps me get lots of creative ideas. And it's right there at the front. And then the last thing I use would be this bottom drawer. And I use this for all my colored paper. So my cardstock. These are all my different shades of each color. I haven't labeled them yet because I really haven't found the need to. I mean, you just can look at this and know that those are reds, <laughs> those are burgundies. And then I do have some new paper I just got. So these are some Stampin' Up packs that match the Stampin' Up pads that I have. Those are all Stampin' Up. All the rest of them are just different card stocks I usually get from Hobby Lobby or wherever I pick up paper. Usually Hobby Lobby. I wait for their sales and then I go and get some paper. And if I need to, I have these little sheets that came off of the paper and I figured if I wanted to make labels, I could use these to tell me what's in each one. As I've been using this, I haven't had a need because I can see, you know, even from, so I'm standing usually, so I can see from the top what's in each folder. All right, what I really like about this setup is it looks clean. I think it's super functional and it gives me some room to grow. Thanks for sticking with me this far. As promised, here's your bonus tip. This is a tray I use for put away. So I throw things in there that need to be put away after a craft project. And what I've done here is I've put some of that 3M magnetic tape on the sidewalls of this bin. And this allows me to throw those metal dies in there and they don't get lost. I have a problem where I get really involved in lots of different small dies and I sometimes find them under my desk or inadvertently thrown away. So this ensures that I can keep them where I need them and then put them away easily without losing them. So I hope you enjoyed this tip and you can use this in your craft area. I really enjoyed bringing you along with me as I truly enjoyed this project. I hope you got a lot of tips and tricks for your own craft area and I look forward to crafting with you in the next video. If you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful, please click the like button. Also subscribe as I create twice weekly. I look forward to bringing you along this fantastic journey with me. See you in the next video.